G'day guys, and today Sean and I are doing the AFL Q&A, episode 15, I'm pretty sure, pal. Yes, it is. Sounds about right. It's, uh, all we got to do, guys, is just comment a question, and we'll answer it in our next Q&A video, and we'll upload it with your question answered, most likely. How easy is that? That's all we have to do, is just so comment away, and we'll give the answers away. Sweet. Starting us off this week is Lockie Boy 2 Good boy. <laughs> Hi, just got a question. Do you reckon Dawson Simpson will be at Geelong next season? Well, I reckon he will be, but just because he will be doesn't mean I want him to be. I don't want him to be there next year because he's 26 and hasn't really looked like uh, imposing himself and it's just slow and all those kinds of things. But um, I can see why Scott would keep him for insurance, but I hope they don't, to be honest. So, yeah, that's what I think. Uh, he's a real liability at times. I'm taking the words the words right out of your mouth, mate. <laughs> it's all right, mate. It's all right. Uh, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Okay, I'm going for it. Um, if you have any thoughts on it. I do have some thoughts on it, mate. He does. And it's, of a bit, it's a bit left field. I think it'll all depend what happens in the off-season trade-wise and... Even draft wise, Nathan Vardy. Yeah, that's right. Nathan Vardy is what I got written down here. If he gets through the rest of the year right, then they may chop him. I hope so. But the insurance factor is important, no doubt, because um, we do have a few others at Ruck, Blitzer, Walker. We have had our eye on Lewenberger. You never know. We have Patrick Lucy and Tom Reed in the in the ranks there. Did you get the news, mate? What's that, Tom Reed? <laughs> I, I feel like it's a similar name in the news. Yeah, someone like that does. So. It could be down to um, more uh, effects than rather just himself. Hopefully. Relying on others. But, uh, good question, good Lockie Boy. Quite, yeah, definitely. Um, You've got Dicko, mate. Oh, mate, Dicko, yes. Loves a question. Another great video, boys. Thank you, mate. His first question says, Will you ever start a Supercoach series on the channel? I'll go over to the boss here. Well, my answer is I wouldn't have thought so. So... Um, yeah, I think other channels do that, and you were thinking of doing that next year, whether that be your channel or through Supercoach HQ. Yeah, I've yeah. been thinking of maybe doing a podcast, so give me some feedback on that. Maybe just just myself, maybe you may feature, but cool, I wouldn't have thought on this channel. No, nah, I wouldn't. No, nah, don't think so. Dicko is crushed after that one, but his next question, I noticed some merchandise behind you guys. Yep, so do I. Yeah. And do you have? Do you guys have any other Geelong merchandise? And how often do you buy footy merchandise? Well, we're in the house of Tizio One Hundred here, so again, I'll throw over to the boss. Well, it doesn't mean you can't talk about yours, but I'll let uh, you go first. <laughs> how, how nice is he? Oh, I've got a pillow I made up in uh, Year Eight fabric, so that's a bit of merchandise <laughs> I made up myself. <laughs> And um, you're calling the pillow you made in year eight merchandise. Oh, yeah, I've got, got a few other things, though. I've got a Guernsey scarf, a few stamps, and stuff. So, you know, I don't mind it, but I buy it pretty rarely. You've seen saying all of that. So, I'm just thankful it went uphill from pillow. That's all. <laughs> Did it make it seem like it was my last resort? <laughs> no, I was happy to finish that. I no, didn't think I would, but i um, got a few DVDs as well. The victory packs, they're great as well. So, yeah, nothing beats That's a DVD, mate. hey. Mm. DVD's where it's at, love them. Yeah, you love fair it. working over and all the different radio calls and that, but uh, the old man buys heaps of merchandise, doesn't he? You've seen it, of course. It's, frames. There's probably about six or seven Geelong frames around the hallway and family room, so... Good yeah, stuff. Not out of my own pocket, but I get to see it, so it's <laughs> a win-win. <laughs> oh, wow. And next up, who do you think I... Who do you guys <laughs> think... Are the best and worst umpires. I'd pay little to no attention to the umpires. Um, likewise, likewise. Which may seem a bit ignorant, but I, I'm not an umpire complainer, and, and neither are you, mate. We don't umpire bash too often, so I guess I, I personally, even if I knew them, wouldn't say any are that bad. I think uh, some have their moments, and generally they do a pretty good job. But unfortunately, I don't have any names, to be brutally honest. I think Trent Dumont doesn't have a favourite. Ah, oh, yes. Razor Ray. Yeah, not that I have a thing against him, but, yeah, it's about one of the only ones I know. I know Dave Harris, who does... Oh, he's the general manager at where I umpire, so, yeah, I can't say he's a bad umpire, but <laughs> I haven't really seen him umpire before, but there you go. Um, as Shorty said, I, we don't really pay attention to umpires because they have very little impact on the game, and we focus on what the coaches and what the teams can control rather than what they can't. So, 
Yeah, no, well summed up there, mate. No point bashing umpires. Yeah, that's right. And finally, is there anyone in Geelong's best 22 who you believe shouldn't be in there and is lucky to be getting regular games? Go for it. I reckon we have similar philosophies on this. I think Shane Kirsten probably, we do a fair bit of bashing of him. He's on the chopping block a bit. Yeah, I think it's warranted. Um, Kirsten does get regular games, but... Perhaps a bit lucky, I'd have to say. Oh, sure. Unlike Paddy Ryder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Kirsten's probably the only one. I mean, it's, I feel bad by saying he's lucky to get games in the AFL because <coughs> he does play pretty good footy at VFL level and yep. and perhaps deserves his chance at AFL, but maybe the length of time he gets up there is oh, it's a bit fortunate. Way too generous, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, what yeah do you reckon? I've got Kirsten on here too, mate. Uh, I think most cats deserve their spot and really are made to work for it. But Shane Kirsten, he's in because of the necessity, I think. But even still, I'd rather another small uh, forward, to be honest, or midfielder to create a bit of extra run because Shane doesn't do enough. He just goes missing all the time and doesn't offer much. And, you know, he has a few moments where he's okay, but the moments are few and far between. Very nice, mate. Very nice. It's yeah. going to last a little bit here, but I can't read it because something's been yeah. photocopied over it, mate. Do you remember uh, what he said? Good old printer, I think. I think he mentioned about I'll ask more fully related questions because I've asked a lot of random questions. Oh, yeah. Then, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> well, he certainly got back to the footy, so thank you again, Dicko. And see, I felt Q&A. <laughs> Nesky's Gaming. Hey. Hey, mate. <laughs> My question is, what is the team you hate the most and why? Oh, it's a tough question because I've got three teams here. I've got Sydney, Fremantle, Hawthorne. No, not because they're going well. Well, kind of, <laughs> but... Uh, you're asking your own Q&A, mate. Yeah, yeah. Fremantle have knocked us out of a few finals and beaten us in some big games, and that's annoyed me. And Ross Lyon does well against us. Uh, Sydney, which I'll answer soon with another answer to a question. And Hawthorne. I don't hate them as a team, per se. I hate them, them doing well, I guess. So, yeah, they're taking over what was awesome produced by us in the mid-2000s to late-2000s. So, uh, yeah, those are my teams. Yeah. And nice, before we get to you, mate, we got the Junkyard Dog answering Hawthorne. I appreciate it, mate. <laughs> but you had a crack at someone the other week for answering your question, saying, wasn't asking you, mate, and you've done it again. You've asked, <laughs> you've answered someone else's question. If you don't want it happening, don't do it to anyone else. Awesome. A blunt serve from Tizio. Just... just We'll answer the questions, mate. As, as we've said in the past, we'll answer them. I appreciate your input, but it's our Q&A, and they're asking us, and there you go. Don't hold back, mate. Very, very nice. We'll, we'll, Do you have any comments, mate? Look, mate, I'll just quickly move on. I, I, I agree yeah, with you, but yeah, I'm, a little, I'm a little shaken up by his stern words there, mate. It was pretty, pretty intense. Junk out We're getting to him soon as well. Probably in tears at the moment. We'll yeah. never ask a question again, but I understand your point. It's a good point. Uh, who do I hate and why? I hate Hawthorne, and if you are... Viewing this channel at all regularly, you'll you'll definitely know that. Um, Especially the Geelong reviews and everything else. Probably yeah, everything. Yeah. I respect Hawthorne a lot as a club. So, so hey. yeah, I mean, they're, they're the best at the, at the moment. And they somehow managed to regenerate themselves and they're a fantastic club. Been the best for 50 years. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't hate them. I, they've inflicted some of the worst footballing experiences on myself, be it at the game or otherwise. And I just find often when they're going well, they don't mind a bit of swagger and arrogance. And, well, I enjoy that. If we're going well, oppositions I do not. So, the there Hawks are mine. And Way a long way. Yeah, there's a, a million games we could come up with where Hawthorne is just one out of nowhere. Like, we can get 25 goals and the Hawks won. And when we were fifth and they finished eighth and they beat us. So, yeah, could come up with more. But I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to talk about it. That's all right, mate. We'll, and we'll, you don't want to hear about it, so <laughs> next one. We'll move on to the, the junkyard dog. Yeah, I said he wasn't far away. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it, mate. So he's got a few questions here. How long? Very does, good. Sorry, man. Um, how long does it take for you to upload a forty-minute video? Not my area. Again, I seem to be throwing to the Tizio One Hundred yeah, over here. Probably shaking it away. Maybe organising questions differently, but uh, it takes about as long as it as long as a video goes for generally. Yeah. Like, it all depends on your bandwidth, really, matey. So if you've got a good upload speed, then uh, that certainly helps. I mean, download doesn't matter as much if you're uploading stuff. So yeah, I've got a 5 megabit connection. 
which is upload, so that certainly helps me. Um, it takes a while to process it initially on YouTube, and it also takes a bit to actually, with my software I use, it takes a while to get up and happening, and putting the audio together and saving the file uh, takes time as well. So there you go. Good stuff, mate. Secondly, do you think the 2012 Brownlow medal should be taken off Joe Watson as he was on drugs that year? I don't think so, Pretty mate. positive comment. Yeah, no, I'd, I don't think so, pal. Um, I mean, they haven't really been found guilty, have they? I mean, it's, no, no, they have not. I guess that conversation may come up if they were found guilty, and I suppose if it was direct to that time and for the whole year, then, yeah, maybe they will, sort of Olympic medal style. Um, but I would say probably not. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they have the evidence to conclusively say. And no, certainly not. <clears throat> Watson's a great player. I don't think he won a Brownlow because of whatever Drugs. he was allegedly on. Um, he's had many a great year, and that was just his best. So that's my thoughts. Pretty good, mate. I've, yeah, I'll short answer no. <laughs> um, yeah. I have no evidence to back it up, and it's just... Silly. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's not probably worth talking about. <laughs> Straight down the barrel. Um, who do you think are the two worst commentators? He thinks Junkyard Dog reckons Mark McClure and Eddie McGuire because they are biased. Okay. I will agree with you on McClure, not necessarily because he's biased, but I'd, I don't really like the way he goes about it. He's very old school in his thought process, and I think he's past his use Kick by date. long down the line. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit past his use by date with a few of his thoughts, but um, Tim Lane almost used to bore me to tears when he was on <laughs> TV, and I don't oh. even know if he's still commentating because I don't choose to find out where he's at to listen to me. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Could be on the radio, maybe. Yeah, I think he is somewhere... I'm not really one to... There's not a great deal of hate going on for me with the, the footy. Yeah, we're not really negative people, are we, mate? No, not really. Uh, some you don't like as much, but he's not a commentator, but Jake King is a boundary rider for Triple M. And Didn't he play for the Tigers? He did, mate. He did. Oh, really? I was just making that up. Oh, yeah? No, no, I'm serious. Jake that Jake King. King is on oh, Triple M. Oh, okay, yep, yep. I was just tongue-in-cheek. Well, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. no, there you go. He does not have the voice for radio. <laughs> and doesn't have the face for TV. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't string sentences together overly well either. Yeah, you can imagine that. And while his thoughts are sometimes decent, he's just your typical footballer who wants to give media a crack and just walk straight into it. And You got this man over here. Yeah, of course it is a, a bit of a bug in my bonnet or whatever the saying is, but yeah, you have a listen to him on Triple M on a Sunday... Yeah, it just it just doesn't feel right. He doesn't feel professional, and no, you, sorry, you don't, Jake. You don't think of Jake King and professional in the same sentence? No, I don't. He's just a scrapper. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got a few thoughts on that topic, mate? Uh, Tim Lane. Yeah, we agree on that one. Uh, he's I just don't like his voice. I can't impersonate his voice, so that annoys me too. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just sounds like a, a cow getting murdered or something like that. I don't, I don't know how else to put it, but yeah, it doesn't sound great. I'll give you that. Uh, out of the current ones, and it's tough. Like, I think Basil, I think he's good, but he's just the one I don't like the least, I guess, is probably how to look, look at it, but I don't hate him by any means. He's, he has his place and he does an alright job, but I just like the rest better. What about Finey off SEN? You remember listening to him on the, the Ray Black from Melbourne? That was pretty painful, mate. I'll put him in there, just for special effect. <laughs> alright, we'll move on to his final question. What was the game where you were the most angriest or the saddest at the result um 2008 grand final quite clearly for myself I, yep. I reckon this is the answer to quite a few questions in regards to being sad slash angry at the football for sure which we get asked quite a bit funnily enough but, uh, I don't know yeah. why people like to relive that it's self explanatory isn't it really we, we lost the biggest game of the year when we were massive favourites and I was there and I was both angry and sad so there you go Tim times mate <laughs> it was yeah. Luckily, I got over quickly. Uh, Sydney in the 2005 semi final was one of the first games I remember watching, and we were 23 points up. And Nick Davis can go die. And I just don't know how we lost it. Back then, I didn't know much about footy, but I think even any optimistic Cats fan would have thought we were close to being home. But everything went wrong, and they win the grand final. So it's, uh, it's so frustrating, and I've hated them ever since. So yeah, no, not much right. hate, but 
Yeah, I didn't like that line at all. No, I totally agree, mate. And uh, you got the next question. Aussie video maker. Will Dockers win the GF? The girlfriend? <laughs> the grand final? Uh, no, they won't. No, simple no. as that, mate. They're what, top of the ladder and you're saying no chance? No, no, they can't win. Uh, West Coast and Hawthorne, on the other hand, though, can. Fremantle do not score enough, and they don't defend well enough against teams that score well enough themselves. So, <laughs> yeah, Fremantle, I, I do like them, and I do rate them, and I like what Ross Lyon can do and has done to teams. But if they're going to win a grand final, they probably have to beat a Hawthorne or something along those lines, and they simply can't beat them in Melbourne. They, they can maybe beat them in Perth, but it's not the grand final's not played in Perth. I give them a chance, but I barely do, so... I think uh, West Coast or Hawthorne, more so West, uh, Hawthorne, are a chance, a better chance to win one. Yeah, I think that the last point you raised is certainly the one I agree with you on the most, is the fact they can't beat Hawthorne in Melbourne. Yep. But I do think they're a chance, mate. I think if they can get Michael Johnson back in that lineup, and this is right now the point where generally the form side from here on out will be the Premier. So... As funny as it is, you can almost disregard everything that's happened so far. Yeah. I mean, obviously not fully because the latter is what it is at the moment. But from here on out, history will show the team that hits form now and sustains it throughout September wins the flag. So there's an opportunity for the Dockers while they've been poor through the middle. There you go. To do that. And plus the fact they should finish on top of the ladder, which will give them a home final and then possibly a home prelim final, which could give them into the grand final. Pretty With quickly. a little proviso that they could play West Coast, which would eliminate that home ground advantage. Absolutely, mate. But just a few of my thoughts there. Good stuff. You got and the next one, I Sure do, from Kate, Kate Smith. Smith. Got a couple here. Go Top on, 10 yeah. players in the comp. I'm going to go with you first, mate. All right. Well, what's the question, mate? Asking who's the best 10 Who is the best? Oh, I've actually got a key position player in there. I've got one as well. There you go. Fife is in there, Ablett's in there, Prittis, Hanabry. Hey, mate, mate, are you ranking these 1 to 10? Or are you no. Just... They're top 10. Okay. Fife, Ablett, Prittis, Hanabry, Hodge, Armitage, Dangerfield, Pendlebury, Alex Rance, Sam Mitchell. Interesting. I don't know how Rance he got in there, but <laughs> I couldn't think of anyone else. So no, that's all right, mate. I like... could have, but he's been fantastic. Yeah, no, he's probably in the All Australian at the moment. I've gone. I reckon on... you've got someone in there I don't like. Well, I'll just read it. I've actually ranked them 1 to 10. Yeah, it's not. 10 a bit of an interesting one, and you can probably throw quite a few there and abouts that were perhaps rough to be a couple of places down, could yep. lean up a bit further. 1, Fife, number 2, Ablett, Dangerfield, Todd Goldstein, I've got it Goldie. 4. Yeah, don't have any money. Yeah. <laughs> Pendlebury at 5. Hanabry, I think, is in fantastic form. Comes in at six. And Prittis, you mentioned him as well, in elite form. Dane Beams, I reckon he's had a great season. Yeah, he's been good. Nine is Sam Mitchell. Um, Honourable mentions, before I say number ten, I didn't quite fit in, say, Robbie Gray. David Mundy was a bit stiff. Joel Selwood, despite it's been a poor season. Oh, he'd be far out. Yeah, yeah, I guess... Far away. <laughs> I guess that's how you look at it, isn't it? Um... And Hodge was another one I really thought out. Number 10 was Brett Deledio. Yeah, he's been brilliant. And he has been over his career. Yeah, so often he was talking about maybe his overrated as a number one pick. And now I reckon he's underrated just about as the season goes on. Uh, yeah, he's the best pick in the last top one. or well, first draft pick in the last 10 years. Yeah, and he, he plays such an important position. Like, he's a medium-sized forward, which are rare to be successful. He finds heaps yeah. of the ball. Everything he does, something happens. Absolutely. So that's why he makes my top ten, mate. So and I'll sound like Wayne Carey here, but when Deledio is playing and playing well, the Tigers generally win. <laughs> and win well. <laughs> and win well, <laughs> as, as Carey loves to say. Yeah. Next dark. up. Speaking of the dark, well, that's after this question. But <laughs> Just calm down, mate. Don't get I'm, I'm fine. Probably. Don't get ahead of yourself. Here. All right. Calm down. Do you think Dangerfield is going to Geelong? Do you still think Dangerfield is going to Geelong? So, Don't ask me. Okay, then we'll throw it straight to me. Yes, I do, mate. I think... Um, I think you'll still come to Geelong, yes. Quite quite plain and simple. Whether you're referring to events that have happened through the year or his form at the moment, I think in the big picture, while at the time 
it may feel tough to leave or looks like he doesn't want to leave. Yep. The mere fact that he's not really keen on talking about it and when he has is almost an awkward dance. I mean, sort of dancing around the question, it's, it's a bit like he's dancing with his sister. It's just not good to watch. It's a bit <laughs> awkward, mate. You know, he doesn't want to answer the question. He doesn't want to say no. He doesn't want to say yes. He Sounds like some familiar vets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Others have signed around him in Walker and Sloan. So, look, I think if Geelong can find enough money and or players to make a deal, which yeah. I'm sure they will, Fair enough. then he will come home. And I think that's the main point is coming home, not so much money. And premierships, apparently. Yeah, yeah, of course. And Geelong and Adelaide are probably in similar positions. Absolutely. Now we can get to Wayne Carey, mate. Duck. Lee Matthews versus Wayne Carey. That's all he's got there, so old schoolyard pick, I'm thinking. You get to pick one who's, I guess they're probably two of the best players of all time. You probably want Top to two. know who you've got higher. Top two, you reckon? Gary Appleton would be right up there too. Give him top three, top four. <laughs> <laughs> Since you want to be dancing around it, mate. <laughs> Uh, Lee Matthews has been regarded as the player of the century and he didn't win a Brownlow which is funnily quite interesting actually because uh, you know, I think in the open mic thing he said oh, he was asked oh, would you rather have a few Brownlows or you know, be player, of the, player of the century he's like oh well, you get a brand new Brownlow each year so <laughs> you know you don't get player of the century too often so you would have preferred that title but he played, I think, over 300 games, kicked over 900 goals. I think that's awesome as a rover slash forward and will probably never be done ever again, probably without not, a doubt. Yeah. Full, forwards, full forwards these days, whatever they are, struggle enough to get close to it. And Matty Lloyd, who was one of the best full forwards in the 2000s, struggled, well, no, he didn't struggle, but he did get there and it's quite an amazing achievement. So, yeah, he was... Ruthless, uncompromising, and I've barely seen both of them play, so there you go. Um, I'm just going based off what people have said, pretty much. Yeah, that's a pretty good point, mate. Uh, Neither of us have seen him play, but I'd be going Wayne Carey, actually. The Dark, whack! I'd be going Wayne Carey, widely regarded as the best player of all time. Yeah, I think it's a load of bogus. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think probably, I think it came up in discussion on the Q&A, Ablett Senior or Carey, and we or even the best players of all time, and they're probably the two we've talked about. I mean, Lee Matthews is in the conversation, but for myself personally, probably hasn't been right up there, obviously not far off, but it's generally been Ablett Senior and Carey. Have you seen uh, Lee Matthews' open mic? I haven't seen his open mic. I've seen plenty of highlights. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not, you know, these sort of questions come up often, and they're, it's marginal sort of differences. I can see yeah. why you pick Matthews, but yeah... I, also, the fact Kerry's key forward, an absolute, you know, gun player. Yep. That's, uh, yeah, marginally would be picking Kerry, but, yeah, it's, it's a bit like the Ablett Senior versus Juniors. Both have who, their pluses, and it's tough to split. Who would know, to be honest? <laughs> yeah. Move on to the last two, mate. Uh, is it, yeah, I guess it's one. Yeah, uh, you go for cap, it, mate. Cap underscore Carter one. Hi. G'day, mate. What do you think GWS will get for Adam Trelaw if they have to trade him to Collingwood? And who do you think are the worst players for every team they get games? Another list, mate. I don't know what you're doing with me, mate. But um, for Collingwood, oh, I don't know. First round pick, the player would be the most logical. But well, what player? I don't know. For solo, not for solo. Um, Backman. Carnesis. We'll go with Carnesis. He never gets a game, but he goes <laughs> on <laughs> for his season. <laughs> Give him a VFL player. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> I reckon awesome. they're going to have to pay some top dollar, mate. First round pick, you reckon? Oh, well, I don't know, mate. Oh, know. They, this is my area. It's your area, so okay. I'll direct it over to you, but I'll imagine a first pick and a decent player that gets a reasonable amount of game time. Not the twos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with you, mate. I know what you're saying. Same now. boy. Sammy Dwyer, he's not the worst player, is he? But uh, definitely yeah. top pick and a player, I agree. How many picks, how many players? Well, it'll <laughs> depend on really what they decide, but I'm reckoning the Giants may want a defender. And a I, think, defender. I think if Frost wasn't having all this speculation around his career at the moment, and if that can, you know, if that dark cloud over him can vanish, then yeah. he could be the man. He may want a fresh start. 
the Giants have good defenders at the moment, but older ones. Um, yeah, they and, do, yeah. And looking Pat at the other... Yeah, yeah, and, and Davis is, I guess he's somewhat young, but mature. Certainly. And just finally, Sharonberg, if they wanted to really get greedy. Sharonberg. Could be one they might. Sharonberg, Frost, and a first-round pick, Jericho, mate. One of Frost or Sharonberg, I would say. And a pick. First yeah. pick. Yeah. yeah. All right, sounds good. Now over to your list, which is going to be fun. <laughs> it was incredibly tough, mate, because I wish it, the question was who doesn't get a game and who's stiff to not get a game. I don't know why you guys have to be so negative all the time, but anyway. <laughs> but I've just named players that, I don't know. If they, I don't know. <laughs> mate, you're the one who likes lists, not me. <laughs> yeah, that's a load of garbage. Anyway. Van Berlo, Lundberger, and some of these are pretty harsh and I don't like them, but anyway, I've written them down. Uh, Liam Jones, Jared Witts, Sean McKernan. Sean McKernan, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Uh, Premier was tough. Matt DeBoer or Hayden Ballantyne, because he's had a very poor year. Simpson and Kirsten, Shane Kirsten probably. Aaron Hall, Josh Kelly. Tough with the uh, new clubs, that's for sure. Billy Hartung slash Sewan Makers. Uh, Jack Watts, Ben Jacobs slash... Robbie Tarrant, Calhoun slash Impey, Sean Greig, even though he's had a good year, Schneider and Memory, Cunningham for the Swans, Hill or Bennell for the Eagles, and Jared Grant for the Western Bulldogs. Nice. That was fun. Have you got something against lists, mate? Like it's just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I do. Yeah. Anyway, next yeah, question, mate. Sorry, mate, I'm sorry. This one just came through on the phone, mate. No YouTube stuff. He's too bloody lazy to get on the computer oh, and type it up. I'm not going to answer it then. But look, Watto, we appreciate the question regardless. He just Facebooked me. Late comer, but we've chucked him in on the end. Jack Watson asks, all Australian back on at the present time. At the present time. All oh, right. Yep. And he thought about Harris Andrews. Surely taking the mickey, big car. Surely. But look, I'll read out from the full back line. I've got... Basher Hooley or Josh Gibson, very tough to split. And maybe Hooley for more rebound. Gibson, maybe if you want a guy spoiling over the top. Certainly. But I probably had Hooley down. Rance at fullback and in the other pocket, Rory Laird, just rebounding beautifully. He's been great this year. He has been fantastic. And off the half back line, a bit more rebound come from Murphy, Robert Murphy, that is. Had a career best year. His disposal efficiency has been through the roof. Definitely, and another man who's been outstanding is Michael Hurley, centre-half back. I think probably edged out Tom McDonald with his great form, certainly of late, and McDonald's slightly dropping off. Yeah, big time. Playing up forward at the moment. Yeah. Don't know why. And a guy not talked about as much, maybe because he's in Sydney, is Heath Shaw. Um, I know he gets a lot of his touches just by tapping on his boot and kicking it out from defence, but he's been using the ball beautifully, finding plenty of it. And doing a fairly good job defensively from all I hear. So. Yeah, well, Supercoach says he's doing well, so <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. knows he's doing well. Certainly, mate. So, thanks for the question, Watto. And that is the All-Australian backline in Shorty's view at the moment. Very good, mate. I don't have one, so... That's all right, mate. I can tell you, you're probably still recovering from the list. That's okay. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I sure am. But those are all the questions this week, mate. Well, yeah. And thank you. Thanks for that, well, are you thanking the audience or thanking me? Oh, a bit of both. I'll thank you as well, mate. Thanks for joining me and thanks for the questions. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. Are you on edge today, mate? Are you a little edgy? I've been sick for two weeks and I hate taking making excuses on people and stuff for why I'm not 100%. I've been feeling absolutely shocking, guys, and struggling throughout this video as we speak. But Jeez. anyway, it's all right, I appreciate all the questions. Ask plenty more because I should be okay next week if I'm not. I'm just going to go jump off a bridge, so <laughs> that'd be, uh, yeah, no more Tizio 100 for Q&As, but anyway. <laughs> Ripping way to win the show <laughs> on a positive note. <laughs> Quite just like up. all these questions, all positive, <laughs> guys. So why can't we ask what's our best moment in history and we we'll have the best players, well, there was a best player question, <laughs> but I don't know, something positive rather than who do you hate, who does this bad, and uh, who's the worst umpire, come on. <laughs> there is a bit of negativity, but Tiz, you're... I'm, I'm, gonna... I'm about as negative as these questions at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you're jumping off bridges, mate. Yeah, it's pretty intriguing, but... Um, anyway, anyway we better wrap it up. We will, mate. Hand. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, thanks for sticking around, guys, as negative as I've been throughout this video. <laughs> Uh, keep asking away. Don't forget to like the video, share it around to your mates, and subscribe as well. It'd be fantastic. 
I'll battle through this cold, so hopefully I can battle through some more. <laughs> it's been tough. Uh, thanks for sticking around, guys, and we'll see you all soon.